I'm Chuck Hawley, and today I'm joined by Kevin Osborne, lifelong boater and the head of our product development team at West Marine. Today's topic is marine inverters, how to select them, how to install them, and how they fit into your boat's electrical system. Kevin, let's start out with describing what an inverter does. Sure, Chuck. An inverter is a power conversion product that turns the energy that's stored on your boat's battery into 110 volt AC power. With this power, you can run appliances and tools that would otherwise be inoperable on a boat. Products that you might find useful are microwave ovens, televisions, hair dryers, drill motors, sanders, and other small power tools. Now those items sound like they might also be powered by a small generator. When should boaters use a generator or genset, and when should they use an inverter? There's no hard and fast rule, but generators are best for large loads that operate for a long time, like air conditioning, an all-electric galley, or possibly a boat with AC lighting. Inverters are better for intermittent loads or on small, long-term loads where it doesn't make sense to crank up a genset. Generators are also pretty expensive to buy, install, and maintain, and they make a lot of noise. Inverters are a lot less expensive to install and are entirely silent, so you won't wake up your neighbors if you want to make a cup of coffee in the morning. We used to call small inverters pocket inverters because they were sort of pancake-shaped and could actually fit in your pocket. Well, this is sort of the new generation of pocket inverters. This is the Pro Sport Power Inverter. This is capable of putting out 150 watts for up to 30 minutes, and in short durations it can put up to 250 watts. You just plug it into your cigarette out, uh, outlet, and then you've got a 110 volt uh, outlet there, and a little power switch and a little power LED. So this turns the 12 volts that's in your car or in your boat into 120 volts and allows you to power items up to 120 watts. The second category is installed inverters, either in a modified sine wave or a pure sine wave version. So this is the Xantrex Pro XM1000 inverter, up to 1,000 watts of modified sine wave power. This isn't an inverter charger, it's a high frequency inverter that gives you really good voltage control and up to 1,000 watts of power. You connect it with DC cables here and here, and then you can plug directly into it with this GFCI protected uh, outlet. It has a digital display so that you can check your input voltage, input current, and output power. Really nice, built right into it, and also it has an LED that tells you what's going on with the product. This can be permanently wired into your boat or it can be used uh, by just plugging directly into it. The third category is the inverter charger. These handy devices combine the functions of an inverter with a high quality smart battery charger and come in modified sine wave and pure sine wave versions. The concept is that when you're connected to your shore power or possibly have the genset running, the inverter charger charges up your house battery bank at up to 130 amps. When you're disconnected from shore power or the genset is off, they automatically convert to the inverter and provide up to 3,000 watts of AC power. These units cost from around $700 to $2,000. Wow, that's a great way to look at the inverter market. Pocket inverters that are portable and able to run loads up to about 400 watts installed inverters that can provide power up to 3,000 watts, and combination inverter chargers that can both charge your batteries and operate as an inverter rated up to 3,000 watts. That makes a lot of sense. But what's this talk about modified sine wave and pure sine wave inverters? Which one should I buy? Okay, I have to warn you that this part gets a little technical, and for most boaters, it doesn't make a ton of difference. First, let's describe pure sine wave AC power. When you plug an appliance into a wall outlet at home or at work, or into a socket that's connected to a quality generator, you get pure sine wave AC power. All AC loads are designed to work on this smooth sine wave, so it's 100% compatible with anything you've got on your boat. Modified sine wave, sometimes called quasi sine wave, is a bit of a shortcut, since the circuitry in an inverter is very good at turning on and off, but not as good as producing smooth sine wave. The majority of appliances and loads will work fine with modified sine wave power, but certain loads like sensitive audio equipment, laser printers, and some light dimmers do not work well. The best choice is to go with pure sine wave inverters, but they generally cost more per watt. Well, thanks for the warning. That was technical. I have one more question. How can someone determine the right size of an inverter to buy? Do I buy it by boat size, coffee pot size, or what? Coffee pot size. Really? That's it? Uh, no. It's actually based on the loads you want to run simultaneously. 
Let's say that you have a microwave that draws 800 watts and a hair dryer that draws 1200 watts. If you run them at the same time, you'll need at least a 2000 watt inverter. However, if you run them independently, you can get by with a 1200 watt inverter. In reality, it doesn't cost a lot more to buy the extra capacity, but you can avoid blown circuit breakers by using large loads at different times. One final word of wisdom on this subject is that big inverters use a lot of battery power. A quick rule of thumb is that if your inverter is producing 1000 watts, it's drawing 100 amps. There are not many loads that come close to 100 amps from your batteries, so you need to have a big bank of fresh batteries if you're going to power loads using an inverter for any reasonable period of time. My suggestion is that if you have an inverter that puts out 1000 watts, you have at least 200 amp hours of capacity in your house bank. 